Hi Guy and welcome to my 8th Japan video blog. Uh, I don't, it is definitely 8, I'm just checking the list. Yep. <laughs> uh, basically we went to Hiroshima today and when we set off this morning to catch the 10 past 8 train we didn't realise just how one hell of a long journey it actually was. Uh, it was about 4 hours uh, on one train, transferred onto another and then an hour and a half on yet another train. And yeah, we arrived at about, it was pushing two, it was around about two o'clock in the afternoon, which left us next to no time. But the plan was we would get there, then we would uh, have a walk around the, the memorial park and go to the museum and just have a gather around the, the monuments there and finish off by maybe a quick walk up the uh, the local high street just to see what it's, you know, what it's like today and what they, they put it into. But the bad news was, yes, there's more bad news. When we, when we got there, it turns out that the, uh, the museum was closed for the day, just for for today. That the, the the one and only day we're probably ever going to go to Hiroshima. We we missed the, probably the the most intriguing part, as it were. But uh, you know, the rest of the part was open, and we did get to have a look around. Uh, I've I've taken footage and pictures of the um, the atomic dome where the literally the, the bomb dropped above and. I was like the, I think it was the only surviving building. Um, as well as that, there was like um, uh, all, the, all the various plaques around explaining about the different memorials, the children's memorial, the atomic clock. Um, you know, overall, it was very, uh, I suppose, a sobering experience is probably the best way to put it. You, I mean, how, how do you approach something like that? I mean, see, not just seeing like all the kids stuff that's been put there, but the, the actual um, the last standing building. I took a load of footage of that just because I've, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, leading up to it, the entire city, you know, it's, it's, it's bustling. It's a proper city now. You know, it's not like a little town. It's a big bustling city, big bustling uh, bus station, trams. You, you know, you name it. There, McDonald's. HMV, all the clothing shops, Gucci, the lot, everything's there and then all of a sudden you just come to this park and then just everything just goes quiet and it's just, it's serene, there's just nothing else like I've ever seen before. But uh, yeah, it's probably one of the, it's probably the best memorial I've ever seen that's dedicated to a cause and again if you're in Japan and you're going that far, because it is bloody hell, it's far to one corner, then yeah, you well, well worth a look. But yeah, anyway, enough of the uh, miserable stuff as it were. Oh, well, I say it was a pretty uh, good experience. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I went and I'm glad I've been. But uh, whilst we were there, it was a bit gutted because the museum was shut. I noticed this um, tall boat out of this, um, oh, I can't think what it's, Me Meiji, Meiji Armour. Basically, it's a big red, big red <laughs> gateway that sat plunk in, in, in the sea off off the coast of one of the islands in Japan and I had no idea you could actually get to it from Hiroshima I mean I've seen, you've probably seen it yourself, plenty of pictures before and we saw this uh, tour board guide which was like um, 2,000 yen and it had a picture of it and it said you know Hiro um, Hiroshima Memo Memorial Park to blah blah whatever it's called uh, Shrine and it just showed a picture of some people walking along to the little little gate on, on, on whilst the sea was uh, or the tide was low. So we thought, yes, we'll get on that. So we hopped on this, and this is about four, uh, no, sorry, about half three at the time, I think it was. So we thought we'll, we'll get on that because we, we, we're going to catch a train back at ten to seven that night. So that should give us enough time. So we went all the way on this boat, a good forty-five, fifty minutes. Uh, <laughs> Which is fairly good to be honest. I again, I took some footage. It was uh, it was nice seeing a part of Hiroshima as, as as it's been built up. But anyway, we, we went all this way past all these hills and had a good look, and then all of a sudden we got to this island and, and the guy dropped us off and then just left us, and and that was it. And it turned out what we'd been dropped on was this massive, massive uh, shrine island with with loads of these things dotted around and full of temples. And a, and a big shrine with like a similar sort of thing with the red archways with like a, a wooden floor that floats on the sea and and stuff but the problem was because it was almost five o'clock we had to come back we had no idea that place was out there I mean <clears throat> sorry if we had it done you know we could have a plan for this earlier in the holiday I mean it was an absolute shame you know, if I'd have known anything about this and I'd have gone but we were literally had a quick walk around there was a, a, a deer 
actually, you know, the actual deer creatures like running around the island. You could you could go up to them, pat them, stroke them. Uh, one male was chasing a female around. Uh, all the visitors trying to hump her. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. I don't think I managed to get a picture because they were moving that fast, but I did try. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it, there's so much there to see, and we had we had literally five minutes we had to turn and get on the boat in order to get back in time to get the train. Because the other problem is, I mean, it's now 12:35 uh, a.m. <laughs> on the 30th, I don't know, whatever of December. You know, I mean, we actually caught the train, and it was a five-hour journey back. Nightmare day for, for for so little, but at the same time it was worth going just because it was Hiroshima and it had to be done. Just had to be done. Uh, yeah, what happened coming back? Not a lot, but one thing I did see on the train, which just uh, which made me and my mate just laugh our heads off. There was this this Japanese girl uh, across the aisle in another seat on the train, and. Uh, and at about seven o'clock, she bought some food out to have a dinner, and it was like a, I don't know what a little maybe a dim sum box or something. And she starts eating all this rice with the chopsticks, and another little box, which is extremely slim, uh, quite young. I, I reckon she I can't really tell with the girls all the room because they put so much makeup on, wear such modern fashion, you just can't tell their ages. And because they're all about four foot five, I'm sorry if that sounds racist, but the majority of the girls over here are, are tiny. You know, they're, they're all under five foot. And uh, yeah, anyway, she was she was just just stuffed in her face, and it was unbelievable. And every time you think she finished, another box came out of this 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 bag, and this this bag was like a tardis or a black hole. I don't know where it was coming from. So she was feeding her face, and she was at it for a good hour. She got <laughs> and we thought, oh, she's fit. She, you know, we were just having a laugh about it. She, you know, didn't understand English, and we were, we were being conspicuous. And then she finally finished, and we thought, that's it, and we just, I, I went back to playing the Assassin's Creed on my PSP. I got Bloodlines, by the way, Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, which is quite good, I, I'd well recommend it. Uh, I will say I've got a hacked PSP, though, so I didn't, didn't buy a copy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as we were playing that for about an hour, and it made us literally his MP3, we suddenly noticed the, the, the girl puts all the stuff, in, uh, stuff away, and this, this other big bag comes out. And all of a sudden the makeup starts coming out. I mean she starts putting on blusher and mascara and lipstick, you know, just as your typical woman would do. Set she was at this for an hour and a half and every time she put a hand in it into a bag, out came a different makeup item and I, I, we were just staring at her like gobsmacked because at one point she, she had like this, this pink blusher and she was dabbing all over it. And I could have sworn there was like a cloud of it over her head just just hanging around. If you had sneezed, it would have just flooded the carriage. It was absolutely ridiculous, but yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that was probably the oddest event of the day. Quite a light-hearted finish, I suppose, uh, seeing what happened earlier.